So this week's episode of Ruby was very revealing for a lot of characters because they were sharing a lot about their emotions. And honestly, I felt like I was watching Dr. Phil. Hi guys, my name is Maria Park and this is Approach to Nerd. In this episode, we are reviewing Ruby Volume 8, Episode 4, entitled Vault. I'm sorry that this review is late, guys. I had an injury on Friday, so, so uh, yeah, broke some stuff. But I'm here, I'm playing catch up, so we're going to jump right in. And I did manage to watch this episode on Saturday, but the medicine I was on from the hospital kind of knocked me out. So I was only able to get one video done, and that was Yashahime, which um, you can check. I'll even link that below. Um, but yeah, now we're here to talk about Ruby, because we love Ruby, and lots is going on in Ruby. This is definitely a darker more character revealing volume. So let's just begin with the first set of characters that the episode kind of opens on that seem to be having a lot of emotions. <laughs> Crow is still sitting there um, on his bed mourning hard over Clover and the decisions he's made. Um, and Honestly, I, I love that he kind of bonds with Robin because he believed for a time that, you know, through his you know relationship with Clover, that he finally found someone that he could have near him that wouldn't be chased away by his semblance. And Robin basically says to him, you know, it's hard for her to make connections because of her semblance too. And they, they really had a bonding moment. And I think it's either in the intro or the outro when you kind of see these two kind of together. So I'm actually rooting for, for Crow and for Robin to be a thing. I know that's weird. I'm not trying to be shipping everybody, but I mean, Crow needs somebody to just make him happy. And I think Robin can do that. And Robin's a very kick-ass character, especially when the bane of my Ruby existence, Harriet, comes strolling in. And I love how Robin calls her Mohawk, but comes in talking crap, basically trying to make Crow feel bad, blaming him, saying it's blood on your weapon and you're the reason that, you know, you know, that this happened to Clover, blah, blah, blah. She literally gets on my nerves. And Robin called her out on her shit saying, you don't want the truth. You just want something to be angry about so you don't have to face the fact that you are on the wrong side. And I'm like, yes, preach it. So love that scene, mostly because I love the bonding between Robert, Robin and Crow and because I love that Robin called Harriet once again out on her shit. I'm just, the girl just gets on my nerves. If any, if there has to be a disposable character this volume, it is definitely Harriet. Because I know that characters can have redeeming qualities, but she just, I don't like her. I just don't like her. So there we go. Um, then we get like this really cool battle between the Grimm that's flying off with Oscar and Team Yang. And you know, they, they actually do pretty well together. They work pretty well. Um, but they lost and they get become stranded. Um, and at the same time, we see that Team Ruby has kind of commandeered um, Weiss's family's home and Whitley's kind of bitching about, you know, how dare you come here and, you know, ruining the family name after what you did to dad and la la la. And I'm like, no, your dad ruined the, the family name. But I love how, you know, they're just talking and Ruby's like, we're just here because our, you know, our friend, you know, Nora is injured. And once we get her healed up, then we will be on our way. And he's like, fine, what do you want me to do? And Weiss is like, go to your room. <laughs> and I'm like... But sadly, the mother is still probably in a drunken stupor locked her, and she's locked herself in her bedroom. Um, it's interesting. I really do like their mother. I just think that she snapped. And if I was married to, the, you know, <laughs> and Weiss's father, I would have snapped a long time ago, too. I don't even think I would have had three children, honestly, but <laughs> that's just me. Um, but yeah, so Nora is basically there to recover and she's still very much unconscious. Um, and Ruby is worried because she cannot reach Yang when she tries to call. So Ruby is very, you can tell Ruby feels very, very, very guilty and bad about how she left things with her sister and the fight they had. So like I said, this episode is very, a lot of people are really revealing their feelings and their insecurities in this. And I actually, I'm, you know, I'm here for it. So it's cool. Um, so back to Team Yang. Ren, honestly, in this episode is being a first class ass. Um, he starts griping about them not being ready to fight, to do all these missions, to be hunters and huntresses, are having the skills they need to be a huntsman. Um, he blurts out about Jun cheating his way into Beacon. 
Um, it, it's crazy. He needs Nora. <laughs> he needs Nora to come and kick his, and just kick his ass because he's he's literally brooding so hard. And I know that part of his semblance, you know, he's affected by others emotions and negativity. But I mean, come on. He is literally, I think Yang was holding herself back from smacking the hell out of him. And I don't blame her because he is basically being the negative Nancy of this entire, you know, volume. And I like Ren, so it's actually really disturbing to me. Um, but I guess every character has to go through it, you know. Jean went through it. I know all of them have been through it at some point. So I guess it's just it's just his turn. Um and then we see Oscar being tortured by Salem because she wants to get not only the relics location, but the password to the lamp. And Oscar's like, well, the lamp's all out of questions. And so she starts zapping him in the chest. And then when he basically says he's not going to talk, you know, she can't get Oscar to talk because, you know, Oscar's not fully him yet. Then he basically starts getting the crap beat out of him by Hazel. And Hazel's another character that just needs, I don't know, he needs a Care Bear or something. That guy's just nuts. And he's like, this is for Regan. This is for my sister. And he just starts beating the hell out of poor Oscar. And, you know, with his little body, I don't know. I, I mean, I've, I feel really, really bad for Oscar. Um, Cinder is also having some issues because she wants to go search for the Winter Maiden. Salem basically put her in her place and said, uh, I will tell you when you can go. You don't make a move until I tell you to make a move. Um, and she even has her grim experiment, the one that grabbed Oscar as her guard dog against Cinder. So of course, Cinder's like, I'm nothing without you. But then she like, you know, decides to go check out Amity Coliseum anyway, and she can't get her normal partner to go. So of course, Emerald's like, I'll go with you. And so, you know, kind of leaves off with her saying, how much have you heard? But it looks like they're going to disobey Salem's order and then go off to Amity Coliseum to, to find the winter, basically to find Penny. Um... And I think that's going to cause a lot of crap, not only for the for our for Penny and our crew at Amity Coliseum or Amity, but also for Cinder. When when Salem finds out that she disobeyed her, she may kill her or this may be what happens. This is probably how Cinder is going to branch off and do her own shit. That's what I think is going to happen there. Um, And of course, back with Team Yang, or she's like, do you think? She sees me differently because I didn't, you know, basically follow Ruby's plan. And so Jean's like, of course, Ruby still loves you. You know, she's your sister. And then Yang says, yeah, Ruby. And I'm like, she's talking about Blake. <laughs> I'm like, she's talking about Blake. I mean, uh, they, guys, if Yang and Blake are not canon, <laughs> that is some really crazy queer baiting, I'm just saying. Um, she is definitely more concerned about how Blake, you know, th what Blake thinks about her than what her sister thinks about her, which is sad for Ruby, but not sad for Blake. <laughs> so I'm completely down for that. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was really interesting. So yeah, there was, there was just a lot of characters in this that were in their feelings and was wanted to let those feelings out. Because you got, you know, Crow over talking about, I'm, I just... I really just felt like I had a friend and made a connection and, you know, my semblance didn't push him away. And then Robin's like, I can't even form connections. Can actually, you know, relate to that. And they had a moment. And then you have, you know, Ruby worried about Yang not answering. You have, you know, Ren losing his, Ren's losing his shit. And you have Jean trying to be the mediator. And you got, you know, Yang worried that Blake thinks less of her. And it's like everybody's going through it. <laughs> and I love it because it's making this, the character development even bigger to me than the past volumes because they've always had character development so i'm not saying that it's like been a superficial level but i just feel like the meat of their character development and the exposition and backstory all that stuff is kind of accumulating in volume eight i like it i, I like what they're doing so i the episodes are so short though like just when you're like really into it you get the credits so i'm like ah oh. and i know it's always been that way with ruby but it just i really wish they were longer sometimes but for what we got, I was not disappointed. So now I, I cannot wait for our next episode. I want to see how they're going to save Oscar. Um, I need to see if how Yang and our team Yang is going to either, I'm assuming potentially at some point meet back up with team Ruby because from the opening, it looks like they are. Um, or if they're going to be the ones to go without backup to try and save Oscar, which would be probably a very big mistake at this point because they are not ready to take Salem and her her science experiment on all her minions at this point. So that would be a mistake. Um, I want to know what's going to happen in Atlas now that Team Ruby is 
in Atlas. So there's so there's so much I, I really, really want to know. And I think the biggest thing is um, how are Crow and Robin going to get out of jail? Because I know they're going to escape. And how are they going to deal with Cinder now that she's out for blood, basically looking for Penny? And can somebody please just push Harriet off something large and, you know, just just get rid of her? Not kill her, just stick her in like a void somewhere where she can't get out and she just runs around like Barry Allen and Flash stuck in the speed force or something. I'm just tired of her. Please. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so that is my review on Ruby um, and episode four. Pretty good. Liked it a lot. Can't wait to the next episode, but I want to know what you guys think. So please leave me a comment below and let me know. And if you would like to sign up for jury duty, hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to know who's next on the nerd bell, hit the notification bell. Until next time, I can't wait for you to approach the nerd. Bye, guys. Thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate it. But hey, the party doesn't have to stop now. Click on one of these videos and keep it going.